We're glad to have you with us. Welcome to Business Incorporated and Channels Television. I am BC at Debayo. First, today's headlines. Saudi Aramco shares surged 10% as historic IPO begins trading. In total, gets Libya's approval to acquire Marathon Oil's assets for $450 million. Plus, businesses continue to suffer in South Africa as Eskom reiterates that blackouts are likely to continue for the rest of the week. Well, let's hit the markets right away. And it's a mixed bag of numbers coming from major African stock markets at intraday, with the Nigerian All Show Index down 0.07% as at midday. In South Africa, the JSA Index was up 0.32% while the EGX30 was down 0.37%. In Kenya, though, the market finished Tuesday's session 0.1% positive. Well, it's a different story in the Middle East, where all the major markets with track are in positive territory, thanks to Saudi Aramco, the world's largest IPO, which surged past expectations as it debuted on the Saudi Stock Exchange this morning. We'll tell you more about that later. Now, the Saudi index surged over 1% as at intraday, while the Qatar index was 0.22% higher also at that time, in Dubai, the index was up 0.97% and the Abu Dhabi index was also 0.4% positive. Let's turn now to Europe, where stocks are trading cautiously today as investors await the U.S. Federal Reserve's interest rate decision and monitor developments ahead of the weekend's U.S.-China trade tariff deadline. Chelsea Delaney is waiting to tell us more about this and other stories moving the markets today. Chelsea, let's start with Saudi Aramco making its public debut today after holding the largest IPO ever that valued the company at $1.7 trillion. But the kingdom is still set on reaching a $2 trillion valuation. Does it look like this could happen? Saudi Aramco is getting very close. So the, the stock opened up in its debut today, uh, 10%. So that's the maximum amount that the Saudi exchange is going to allow uh, the stock to trade up in a, in a single day. So it's already hit the max at the, the beginning of trading. They need to, to rise about 8% more to hit the $2 trillion mark. So this could certainly be uh, something we see over the next couple of days. There are really a lot of things working in Saudi Aramco's favor here uh, for the short, short term including, um, for one, the, the stock is expected to be added into the MSCI uh, Emerging Market Indexes over the next couple of weeks. That will bring more money in. Uh, the, the recent OPEC deal to cut uh, oil uh, uh, production could also drive oil prices up. That could impact the stock as well. And there have been several reports today about uh, the Saudi Kingdom putting pressure on uh, wealthy families, on investment funds, on local investors to buy more of this stock because they really want to hit this $2 trillion value. Um, but over the long term, there is going to be a concern, especially among international investors, about this valuation. That was a key um, factor in, in the fact that a lot of institutional investors out in, in outside of uh, the Middle East decided to sit this offering out. They were already concerned about a $1.7 trillion valuation. They thought that was too high. So. Uh, a lot of investors are saying even if we do hit $2 trillion over the next couple of days, it's not clear if it's going to stay that high going forward. Oh, we'll see how all that plays out. Now, the World Trade Organization is in crisis as its appellate court has effectively been shut down. And that's after the U.S. blocked appointment of new judges. What could this mean for global trade? A lot of trade uh, advisors, a lot of uh, investors are saying this is a really a moment of crisis for the global trade system. Uh, this WTO appellate court was really the mediator, uh, the umpire of trade disputes between uh, countries of the, in, the, in the WTO. That's 164 countries. So it was really playing a key role uh, in moderating disputes. And now it's, they just can't do it anymore. There's, there's no uh, judges to, to moderate these disputes. And the fear is that this is going to lead to more uh, unilateral trade action on the, on the behalf of, of countries. So uh, without this appellate court, um, a lot of countries could just do their own tariffs. They could do their own sanctions um, because there's really no legal recourse for them at the WTO level. So that's definitely going to be a concern. There's also a lot of uh, cases already held up in this appellate dispute. So 
uh, things like the, the EU's case against Boeing subsidies and um, several s disputes over the U.S.'s tariff policy regarding steel and aluminum tariffs. And those cases uh, could also lead to more tit-for-tat um, tariff uh, uh, action from these countries if, it, if, if these disputes aren't going to be settled at the WTO level. There is an effort in the EU um, it, it, between EU countries to, to create a new uh, sort of side body that could mediate some of these disputes, but it hasn't gotten the buy-in that it really needs at this point to, to be a real um, substitute for the appellate court. Well, before you go, Chelsea, the U.S. is just days away from imposing a new round of tariffs on $165 billion in Chinese goods. What's the latest of the negotiations to delay the tariffs and how are the markets responding? The latest indications that we've gotten over the past couple of days, uh, they, they suggest that the U.S. and China are laying the groundwork, that's the word that's been used, for uh, a delay in these December 15th tariffs. That's going to be really important for investors and for companies because these tariffs were expected to really have a significant impact uh, both on the U.S. and China because the tariffs would be hitting um, a lot of really popular consumer goods, things like cell phones, computers, toys and clothing. So uh, that was expected to be a problem for both countries and, and both China and the, and the U.S. have really not wanted to do this. Um, so I, I think there's still a lot of focus on, on that. Um, so a potential delay, the, the U.S. administration is not committing to that at this point, but they're saying they, that it's a possibility. But this also raises a, a broader question about uh, if they do re if they do delay these tariffs, what does it mean for this phase one trade deal? Um, and that's even more unclear at this point. So if they do delay these tariffs, it doesn't necessarily mean that a phase one deal is is uh, in the bag at this point. Um, for investors, this is of course a, a long running saga. They've really been uh, pushed back and forth on this a lot, but. I think um, if there is a delay in the tariffs, that would obviously be welcomed by, by investors. But for the long term, it's going to continue to remain a, a drag on, on markets and investors if, uh, if the phase one deal uh, it continues to be pushed down the line. Fingers crossed, Chelsea. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks for those updates.